everybody that dies go, goes to heaven. You know, they're just saved. Mm -hmm. what, when they die. That's the way God set it up. And that should be, <coughs> that should be logical. Mm -hmm. That should be understandable. And once they get there, and once they get there, it's daylight all the time, so there really is no time. So when it says in, uh, you know, the, the uh, um, you know, the, the two witnesses were dead for the in this, for the space of a half an hour, in earthly terms, it's a half an hour. It's just a space of time to them because the daylight never ends. That there's no clock time, as your mom put it. Go, go ahead. I'm done. Are you done? <laughs> Temporarily. Temporarily. <laughs> For your sake. Temporarily. Uh, <laughs> nice night, I was doing some research on hell because there's been a lot of talk about it. Oh, yeah. And, I'm and conditional, and conditional uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, annihilation is now entering the, uh, uh, the evangelical church. Uh, you know, Joel uh, uh, Richardson. Richardson. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you, you know, one of one of the uh, World Net Daily emails I watched part of that this mm -hmm. morning. Yeah. You know, temporary, you know, annihilation for the people that uh, that uh, go to uh, uh, that, that are lost. Yeah, they're saying okay. that there is no eternal hell. Yeah, right. Yeah. There's no, there's no real lake of fire. And they, and they mentioned in there that they said there's no passages in the Bible to support. Well, eternal hell. Well, yeah, and the guy that's doing this is an amillennialist, so you know he doesn't rightly divide the word of God, right? Uh, that Joel Richardson is, 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 is respectfully interviewing for the program. Uh, uh, that they, you know, so and he did bring up, uh, you know, that Jesus said uh, the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched, okay? Uh, which shows you that it lasts forever, mm -hmm. all right? You know, and of course he doesn't, he, he, he doesn't want you to recognize. Oh, that's what I was going to say. He, there's a lot of people out there that are trying to put forth that idea. Yes. And so, so uh, the problem, the problem, the problem here is that people are walking away from the Bible, and we're seeing it even in the evangelical church. They kind, of, they've always kind of picked and choose what they want, just like the Pentecostals do. Mm -hmm. You know, they, you know, we, the fundamentals, are trying, are trying our best to follow what the Bible says and rightly divide it and put the pieces together like the Bible, you know, study to show yourselves approved. You know, um, in, in, in the things we do. Yes. Okay, I, you know, I guess I'm done. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, young lady. When you just said, why can't you say you're dead? You know, that's when God the Father turned away from him was on, on the cross. And he's, and he's, and all the sins of the world, past, present, and future, ours now, which will be put on him then. And, and God, and God the Father can't be around sin, so uh, that's when that's when He turned His back on Him to fulfill that that everything went went on to Jesus to, to pay our sin back, and that was a verbal for us to put in the Bible so that we knew that God did. Yeah, well, it, it, because He took all the sins of the world and He paid our sin back for us, and that was proof that, that He did. Rather just dying there and saying he did. Well, he, you know, he made mention of the fact that, that God the Father had turned his back on him, that God the Father had separated himself from him because of the sin that was on him at that instant. Okay, he paid the debt, and that's why the people in in Abraham's bosom could then, after he went down and preached to everybody, that he set that captivity free. That was the people in Abraham's bosom. All the people that died before he had, before he died. That were in a righteous state could then all enter heaven. They could not enter heaven before that. Then everybody from now on, from that point on, who died, go straight to heaven. There is no purgatory. Go ahead. You're, you're, you're confused. I can't. Yeah, yeah, I kind of get what she's saying. It's almost like Jesus was saying, Well, why are you turning your back on me? Here I am. I'm well, alive. no, he was. He uh, no, he was taking all the uh, 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 yeah. That that is one of the prophecies that 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 uh, you know he would say that if I remember correctly from the Old Testament. It was fulfilling an Old Testament prophecy. All right, I have to look it up. You know, have, you know, you guys can look it up. You, you, you should, you know, get a Bible with cross references, then you look up your own stuff. Okay. Oh, you that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, sorry, you have, you have Smile. <laughs> Don't you? And I keep telling you, 
you guys, all you have to do is ask the Holy Spirit to give you the same insight. Well, if you'll do it for me, he'll do it for me. Yeah, well, that's laziness. That's laziness. That's not laziness. It sure is. Yeah. Because you're not, you're not studying to show yourself approved. Yeah, you're, 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 you're saying, I'm going to do your study to show myself approved for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, don't use that as an excuse because sometimes the Lord says, ask you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so you tell me. Well, he isn't answering me, so I figured it must be. Well, that doesn't say he means ask me. Well, sometimes I get the answer from you when I ask you. <laughs> For what you guys should already know, or a, a an extension of what you know that is in line, so you need, so you get the logical conclusion to it, without without having to um, use other people. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I don't. <laughs> I don't tell you what I think because I don't want you to say that, and you think, "Oh, that's great," and then just and go with that. You you know I don't do that. Stuff. And then and then instead of going in a different direction, if I if I cut them off shut. I don't want your I don't want your thought to be you know stuck on that, and you want to say something different. Well, and you know, you know I do we start start saying what do you think? <laughs> I, just, I should be doing that with you two also. Yeah. Yeah, but, yes, Lee. Yes, Lee. Yes, Lee. Uh, however, it's here. Uh, reading verse 4 of uh, Revelation, I mean, uh, of uh, you know, this class winds up being a Revelation class no matter what I do. I got I to reveal to you what the, what the meaning is. Uh, when you should be uh, getting the meaning yourself. Um, that the uh, righteousness of the law might be uh, fulfilled in us, uh, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's what we should be striving for. That's our goal, all right? That we're walking after the spirit. The Holy Spirit has given us guidance on what to do, and we do things right because of our appreciation for what God did for us on the cross, that we should not be uh, uh, going after the flesh in the things that uh, that we want to do, uh, you know, the materialism of this world, you know, the... Uh, First John 2, 15 to 17, love not the world, the things in it, lust of the eyes, lust of flesh. Too many times we're, we're looking at the conveniences of this world for ourselves rather than looking at the spiritual things of God and uh, do we, do we uh, really need, uh, you know, whatever we're, you know, the item that, that we're thinking about, you know, uh, with, the, uh, the, with the materialism. Uh, commentary on 2 through 4. Uh, he, quotes, uh, he quotes the first verse again. Verse 2. Uh, the law of the Spirit of life in uh, Jesus Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. Uh, the law of God takes, you know, uh, uh, come, you know, uh, makes us free from it uh, because it, it righteously interprets what we should be doing rather than uh, uh, violating what God says we shouldn't be doing. Uh, this expression is uh, reminiscent of uh, 2 Corinthians 3.17, which says, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, uh, there is liberty. Um, a lot of times, this verse is being used out of context to justify everything. I have liberty because I'm, you know, you know, Jesus took care of it, so I have liberty to do whatever I want to do. It's wrong, well, he covers it, he can put that. You know, a lot of people are, are flipping that way. Come up to the abortion clinic and see how flippant they are. You know, uh, you know, um, you know, so what if I'm so what if I'm killing my baby? You know, and, and you know, I'll repent. God says he'll no forgive me. So what's the rest of the problem? Well, don't tempt the Lord your God, right? Okay, that's you know, thou shalt not murder. What part of that don't you understand? Go ahead. Well, how do they justify that when Jesus they are said, not? They're not really safe. So how do you think that they're? Because they're, they're ignoring the fact that Jesus said, "No one sin no more." Yeah. Well, they're not really Christians. 
They're tempting the Lord. They should be with God, but isn't, because they're doing what they want to do. They're loving the world and the things in it. Okay? You know, the baby's going to get in the way of me uh, paying, for, paying for this brand new sports car that I just bought. Okay? They're going to get, get in the way of uh, all my education, you know, and, and me getting my degree so I can make my $100,000 a year, you know, if I get a job at all. <laughs> These days, yes, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, as I'm getting older, I you know when I was a kid, I was looking at all the toys. I had ATVs, I had ultralight aircraft, I had sports cars, I had everything that I could ever want. Now that I'm older, I don't want any of that. I don't want. I don't even want to buy anything. Yeah. Is that because I'm looking at the world in the wrong way? Well, I, I would. I would hope so. Yeah. Okay. Because sometimes the way you look at the world, I, I scratch my head. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, then, then why are you here in this class? You're going to scratch your head about the thing I say. I want to hear the other side. <laughs> uh, we should understand the law of the spirit of life here is to be the principle upon which the Holy Spirit works. He's the one that does the convicting. He's the one that gives us the right way to go. The question is, are we rushing Are we rushing through um, uh, the fork in the road so fast that we don't hear what God has, what the Holy Spirit has to say? Or are we going to stop long enough to listen to him so that we, he gets us down the right track and not the wrong track? Okay? Are you getting that or do you? Yeah, but I have a kind of question. Most of the things that I have we do that, you know, people consider as righteous and everything, isn't it? Things that aren't actually here on the earth. What do you what do you call? I'm not sure what you're saying. You know, like when you do something, when people say, "Oh, she's so righteous," or "He's so righteous," it's because they've been maybe you know helping the poor or or caring for this or that. Things that you don't physically feel or see. People see you do those things. But these are not. We should well. First of all, these are things that the rewards should, are in heaven. We should not be doing it to get rewards on earth, but to say, "Look how good I am," because God says you have your reward already. Right. Okay. We should be doing them out of a pre, under, you know, in our mind, and you know, see, it's 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 what is in our mind that really counts. If we're doing it to to be like the Pharisees and look how good I am, we have our reward already. If we are doing it out of appreciation for salvation, and nobody's going to stop you from doing it, like going to the abortion clinic or whatever else, okay? You know, the things that you do to, to serve God out of appreciation for Him. And if that's in your mind, you're getting a reward in heaven, and you don't care what anybody else thinks, okay? And if, you know, for me, um, the Catholics don't like what I say. I'll go to the abortion clinic. I challenge the people. And I told the Holy you give me what to say and the attitude you want me to say it with. And I'll give it to them because when judgment day, if they don't get converted, if they don't get, you know, if, you know, and what he gives me goes straight to their spirit a lot of times. That's why they that's why they get so mad. Because the Holy Spirit knows exactly what they need to hear. Now they'll get mad at me and yell and scream, whatever, and they go do whatever they want to do. But when they, but you know, if they don't get saved, that sin is on them, and God's going to give them a replay for what's the judgment as to how they reacted. And he's going to say, see, you knew it was wrong. But you did it anyway, right? And so, so it's either it's it's a process that we're going to do what God has called us to do, and we don't care what somebody else thinks. And when they call us, "Oh, you're so, oh, you're so righteous," they're, they're, they're really mocking us. Aren't they? So God doesn't really give us things to do that will, you know, like put a car here, or you'll get an award, or because I know whenever. You get honored for, you know, like going after the abortion thing or, you know, doing something to help people. When when I get an award for that, I feel, oh, I don't like that. Yeah. I don't you mean, want you mean, that. You mean the certificates we get? No, not so. Right to life down in Stark County, they had a big dinner and they honored Vic and I with a plaque and gave oh, us right. stuff and everything. Yeah. And Vic just then did you, not. Yeah, you know, well, we did not. Well, we did then not. you stand up and say, then you give a then you give a testimony. We're only out there because the Holy Spirit calls to be out there. That's what you yeah, know. Okay. And how many of you have been called and haven't come? It's time to come join us. That, you know, that's what you know, I'm asking. Turn it turn it around. 
Make it, make it a, make it a challenge to the other people. Instead of giving you a reward for you doing, get out there and join us. That's what I mean. When we do these things, is it our, our is it our sin nature that says, well, I should get something for doing that? Uh, 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 we should have the attitude that uh, uh, we are doing it out first and foremost. We're doing out appreciation for our salvation. Number two, God says He's going to give us rewards in heaven for it. When, and we should recognize we don't deserve heaven, let alone rewards. So we should not even be worrying about the rewards one way or the other. It, so, should, it should make any difference. And I can tell you that the right to life is not going to give me any work to be able to work. So we should, so we should not be worrying about the rewards. Uh, we should be looking No, you don't look for rewards at all. Here. Well, some people do things because they, because if they get so many points, they're going to get, you know. Well, that's a Catholic. That's a Catholic thing. Go to Matthew 6 24. Matthew. It's the other direction. <laughs> For moments. I think Matthew it's 6 24. I think it's 6 24. 6 24. Okay. No man can serve two masters, for either he will have the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and man. Yeah, we're not going to. We're not going to worry about what man says. We're serving God. You know, that's, you know, you know the other one says, lay, lay a prayer in heaven when I'm off and lost up. They'll corrupt and forgot exactly where that is. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're you know, uh, it might have been 22 and it might have been 26. You know, this is this one that area. Um, I think it is anyway. Um, we are not doing this for man's rewards. <clears throat> we're not, you know, we don't care what other people think. We're there. We're, we should be focusing on God and what he has called us to do and what reward and what he wants us to do, and we should not care at all what, what man says. Yes. 20, 20. Okay. Okay, read it. But lay up for yourselves uh, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Yeah. So that's see, uh, we should be we should be focused on heavenly things, not earthly things. Um, you know, it's nice hang on a second. It's not. It's nice that they gave you a reward to turn turn around and challenge other people to join you. Okay, rather than rather than them uh, thinking they're doing something good uh, uh, by by rewarding you for being there when they won't get out there themselves. You know, and that's unfortunately that's that's a, that's a Catholic way to way to handle things when they don't want to do it themselves. You know, they're in you know the right to life or places are all run by Catholics. Okay, um, go ahead. So if they have received that reward, didn't they get their reward already? Not necessarily. No, I wouldn't say that. Okay. Someone just, they did not do it for the reward that they were giving them. They brought it up out of the blue room, we want to give you a reward for it. Okay. Um, you know, I you know, I, I personally could care less, I probably would have said thanks for no thanks. Okay. <laughs> but uh, but then you, but then you, as I said, you turn it around and say, uh, it's your guys' turn to, to get your own reward. To get your own reward, uh, time, time for you guys to come out and next day you give yourself the same the same the same reward. Okay, uh, get get them get them to do it. Okay, because they they really don't want to do it. Then why do you feel bad? Is what is making you feel bad? Is the Holy Spirit making you feel bad? Well, it depends on what. It, okay, well, I don't you know. Um, you know, I personally would have said uh, thanks, but no thanks. Uh, you know, because you know, the re rewards don't don't mean anything to me. Not not, not on earth anyway. Right. Um, uh, but it you know it is it is a way of um, witnessing. See, <laughs> so you're not captive. They know you. Okay, and they're giving you an reward for something that they know that they don't be doing themselves, and they're not doing. It. Okay, they're pacifying themselves. So you should, you know, hopefully, you know, uh, see, I, I would have turned That's around and, 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 and said, uh, uh, I'll accept this temporarily. You know, I don't know what I mean in my church. You know, they have, you know, they give you a flag or whatever. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, there's some scripture that talks about humility and not being proud or boastful. Yeah, right. But if you stay hum uh, humble, yes. uh, you'll... And I'm sure you remain humble. Okay. Um, I would. I personally wouldn't worry about it because your your focus is on God and getting out and serving Him and doing what He wants to do. Uh, that's all I mean. Or 
is the only way, but we are we are guided by the Holy Spirit to do to do what's right. Keep it, right. Now, okay, see, this, is, this is all the parable of the talents. One had five, got five more. One had two, got two more. The other thing is, too many people have the one talent and they're not using it because it's not really safe. The first talent is our is our uh, our witness for Christ. <coughs> when we go out to the place, we are a witness for Christ. Amen. He's called us out there, and we're following we're following the, the, the direction. We're following the, 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 the footsteps that He has provided for us. You know, like the, you know, the picture of the footsteps, right? you know, like Harry D. or whatever, okay? Uh, we're doing what he wants to do. We are not doing it for earthly rewards to see to see about the rewards that we can get from whoever. It doesn't matter who it is, okay? Whether it's right to life or, or you know, in, in the present United States, who cares about who cares about it. That is important. Okay. <laughs> there's, no, there's, no, there's no value there anymore, okay? Um, you know, it, 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 it means nothing. Um, uh, the only, the, the only, our only concern is: Am I, am I doing something that glorifies God, or am I? in the, the, the only question: Am I glorifying God, or am I trying to glorify myself? And that will answer everything right there. Okay, we are there. You know, we, you know, the people here are, are doing things to, to glorify God, and uh, uh, that's what we should. That's the only thing we should be concerned about. We, you know, we have a concern for people that are, you know, uh, God says murderers can't make it heaven, okay? They're murdering the defense of unborn baby. They're trying to justify their sin any way they, any which way they can. Hopefully you ask the Holy Spirit to give you guidance on what to say to them, to prick their spirit, all right? Uh, you know, get prayed up before you leave. Uh, so that you, you, you know, Holy Spirit knows what they need to do. And... Uh, when you do that, you will be surprised at how often somebody will verbally come after you because you hit the nail on the head. Okay, and then you know, that's when you know you are in line with God. Because, you know, uh, we, will, we will not be in line with the world in whatever we do. Go ahead. And the funny thing is, you know, on my deathbed, I'm going to ask, so I'll make it into heaven. Yeah. Well, if they are, you know, you can tell them, well, if you remember to do that, and chances are you will not, okay? Um, but if you do and you're sincere, yeah, you will get to heaven. The chances are you're just going to be scared, scared to death, okay? And that's the only reason why, and that's the only reason why you're doing it. And that doesn't get you there. That doesn't, yeah. 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 Um, uh, you know, they, people, people can claim that. That they that they that they're going to do that. Yeah. Chances mm -hmm. are they they don't remember because God will take it out of their mind because they've already had their opportunity for something. Mm -hmm. All right. God will, as I said, uh, God comes to each person at the earliest time in their life so they can have the most amount of rewards in heaven for the rest of their life. But if he comes, like Hebrews six verse four six says, he will come at the most opportune time in your life. That you know that there's no point in coming again. Because he would have to die on a cross a second time, putting him in an open chain. In other words, it's not going to happen. If he's already come at the most opportune time in your life and you have rejected, then why should he ever come again? And Joel, Robert, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, no, no. Um, uh, Richardson. Oh, oh. In, the, in the video that he came out, you know, he gave a little bit of his testimony that, you know, um, oh, you know a guy came to him, well, somebody came to him and told him, you either convert now or you will not have another opportunity. Is that what right? No, no, no. He was he, he was a nobody. He's on drugs and alcohol. Oh, and was, oh. went, to, went, went to a tent meeting. Okay. He, he got baptized because he needed a shower. No, 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 because he was so high, he just wanted to cool off. Yeah, yeah. He was so high, yeah, he, he wanted to cool off. Yeah. Okay. But it, as it turned out, it changed his life. Well, no, no so, eventually. but, but some guy, some, you know, and what got him was, some guy had, uh, uh, in the testimony that he gave, he gone to this town meeting. It's at night. It's, it's hot. It's uh, Memphis, Tennessee, uh, middle of summer. Um, and uh, uh, you know, some guy had gotten healed, had gotten had been healed of blindness. And he's out in the field. And he goes out in the field with him. And he says, 
I have never been able to see before. And I see stars. And that that that, that got to him. And then the guy gave him the prophet's prophecy, so to speak. You better do it tonight, or you're not going to have the opportunity, or somebody else did. We have got one of us. Or your this is this is this is your opportunity. This is your one and only opportunity. Hebrews, uh, yeah, that's biblical. As I said, Hebrews six verse four six it says, if it were possible, okay, for you to for for you to uh, uh, you know three things occur, you know, uh, uh, you know, no, no, go, go to it. Let me go to Hebrews six four six. Yes. Uh, isn't it true that God comes to people at the most difficult time in their lives? Well, for some people, you know, He will get them to their knees so that they will accept. Right. The, you know, their spiritual needs, so to speak, in the most difficult time when they need them the most. Right. All right. I've heard yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Say yeah. That. yeah. That's, that, that, that's or yeah. it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift. And the, the, the good work of God and, uh, and the powers that the word come. If they shall fall away to renew them again to uh, repentance, to see and they uh, and crucify, crucify to them themselves the uh, Son of God. Okay. So it's saying it is not possible for this for, for once you've done you know have these three things happen. Salvation involves those three things. You know, they've tasted, they've experienced, you know, uh, for them to come back to that point again, Jesus would have to die on the cross a second time. And God's saying that's impossible. You know, it's 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 written intentionally backwards. For people to study it and see, see what it really see what it really means. Okay, um, that, that you only have one opportunity, and you either accept it at the most opportune time, because God will come as soon as He can to to each person for them to accept. If they don't accept, there's no point in Him coming again because He's already come at the most opportune time. And He says Jesus would have to die on the cross a second time, putting Him in open shame for you to have that second chance. Okay, so you only have the one. So when He said, when He was told, this is this is your this is your chance. Okay, you will die in your sins unless you accept now. That was it. Now, normally, it is not so direct. All right. Um, you know, I you know. Uh, go ahead. Well, I think it's so direct. The rest of us have to go on the day lives once in a blue moon. Well, he day. was he was thirty some odd years old, and and you're and, and you know, and you, you accepted when you were a teenager or, or before. Okay, so you got you were you were young enough that you you didn't you didn't need to. Uh, uh, have an ultimatum given. Okay. Nor, nor was the world as close to the end as it is right now. Now, when did that happen? What? When did this happen? What for you? No, for uh, this guy. Uh, I, I, he, he didn't say how old he was when this occurred. But he's uh, he's old enough that he's tra he's traveling across country with a friend. So he's uh, he's probably at least twenty years old. Okay. Um, and he and he got stopped in Memphis and was. You know, you know, hot. You know, you're just you're just going to ask the minister to baptize us, so you can cool down. <laughs> and he said, and he said, you know, it was just it was just going to be a joke. So anyway, uh, finishing the uh, commentary on uh, two through four, uh, the reference to the Holy uh, to the Spirit of Life uh, is the uh, first time, uh, with the exception of Romans one four one and five five, that the Holy Spirit of God is uh, mentioned. In this epistle, however, during the uh, chapter, the spirit and his uh, operation will be uh, mentioned uh, 19 times. Turn off the Polish music. <laughs> it's for you. Mm -hmm. um, even a uh, casual reader of Romans 8 will leave us with the impression that the uh, spirit of God and the uh, absence of an attitude of uh, defeat go hand in hand. Life is the uh, spirit. Life in the spirit enables us to live free from the uh, law or principles of sin and death. This does not mean that the uh, believer is free from sin or free from the uh, prospect of death. Now, we're not free from sin. We're not free from the physical death. We don't have the spiritual death because we have eternal security. All right. Uh, you know, once you're saved, you are always saved. But it's from God's point of view, not man's. We don't necessarily know who's saved and who's not. 
Remember the squishy middle between the bumps. All right? All kinds of people that we don't know whether or not they're saved or not. Because uh, their actions don't show us that, that they that they have salvation. All right? You know, that's you know, that's the uh, that's the uh, 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 James rating uh, uh, you know two uh, two eighteen. Uh, show me your show me your salvation without your works, you're not saved. And I'll show you my salvation by my works, because I am saved. Um, but that the uh, principle of sin and death does not have uh, dominion over him. It is uh, possible for those who, for whom there is no condemnation to live a life that is not um, inundated with sin, a life which will uh, will not end in death. Uh, quote uh, from uh, what verse four, verse three, for what the law could uh, not do, the law of Moses could not uh, justify us. It could not sanctify us. Uh, because it was uh, weak to the flesh. The Mosaic law is good and holy, but our flesh is, uh, is weak, and uh, we are unable to uh, keep the law. Therefore, the law does not have the uh, power to justify. However, quote, God sent his own son uh, in the likeness of uh, sinful flesh uh, for sin and for sin, uh, condemned uh, sin in the flesh, unquote. Uh, what the law could not do, the Lord could. Paul could. Uh, Paul chose his uh, words carefully when he said that God sent His Son in the likeness, you know, of uh, sinful flesh. Didn't mean He had sin, had sinful flesh. It's in the likeness. Um, and, uh, had He said that Jesus came in sinful flesh, uh, He would be guilty of a doctrinal her uh, heresy. Uh, however, uh, He says that Jesus Christ came in flesh in the likeness of, of man, but was not himself in sinful flesh, for he knew no sin, 2 Corinthians uh, 5.21, and, and he came and for sin uh, to uh, pay the price for it. The word sin in the Greek is the uh, equivalent of the Old Testament sin offering. Uh, the indication, uh, this indicates that Jesus Christ came to be the uh, sin offering for us, and since the law could not uh, be uh, that uh, offering, could not be that offering, God provided our atonement by offering uh, the person of Jesus Christ. The reason, quote, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, unquote. We do not fulfill the law by uh, walking in the spirit instead of the flesh, but uh, God fulfills the law in, uh, in us when we walk after the spirit of God. Thus we are uh, assured of the righteousness of God, which the uh, law could not provide but the atonement of uh, Christ uh, does provide. Uh, questions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.